Coming up, build a giant crane with the strength to pinch a picnic. Get comfortable anywhere with an outdoor airbed. Send your toys flying with the power of leverage. And how to make sure you win at tug of war. Okay, Dana, now take the strain and pull. Hey, you're stronger than I thought. <laughs> well, us girls can do anything boys can do, and we usually have a trick up our sleeves. <laughs> <laughs> Just ask Lara and Emily. Emily and I have taken over the balcony. The boys have lost their base. So down with their pirate flag and up with our own. <laughs> Bad luck, boys. Now the balcony belongs to us girls. Hey, they've got a picnic. It must be a feast. They can hardly carry it. Yummy drinks, cream buns. They're plain dirty. Look at them pigging out on that feast. We're missing out and we're both really hungry. There's got to be a way of getting our hands on their feast without surrendering our new base. But that basket looks too heavy for us to carry. Hey, this flagpole has given me a great idea. We're going to build a basket lifting crane and help ourselves to that feast. Hey, Kimberly, try out my new paper folding trick. Put a square of paper in half, corner to corner, and crease. Unfold the paper, then fold the corners in like this. Kim's getting the hang of it. Fold the base over to make a triangle. Fold the bottom two corners into the middle. Then fold the base over like this. Now fold the two bottom corners in one last time and fold the whole thing down the middle. Excellent. Now stick a pretty paper seal to the triangle. Beautiful. Okay, now to start training. Watch my seal move for the fish. Okay, boy, up, up. Good boy. The way carrie folded the paper leaves most of its mass in the center near the pivot. But as the paper starts to open outwards, the center of gravity shifts. Instead of being in front of the pivot, the center of gravity moves behind it. So it tips and the seal sits up. Hmm, what's Kim made? Hope that's not meant to be me. It is me. Now she's got me doing seal tricks. I think I'd be flattered if someone made a paper puppet of me. I wouldn't be so happy if someone made a fool of me, though. And that's exactly what Lara's about to do to the boys. Emily and I have been defending our base from the boys for hours. And we're starving. Time to build a clever crane to help us grab their feast. We can use this pulley, rope and flagpole. I'll make a hook out of this old coat hanger. Stretch it out a bit and tie the rope to the base. Nice and secure. OK, time to give our basket crane a go. Emily will hold the base of the flagpole while I lower the hook. Excellent. The boys are dozing off after a big lunch. Down goes the hook. I just need to get it through the handle of the basket. Yes, got it. OK, up she comes. Oh, no. It's too heavy. Emily can't take the weight on the end of the pole. We'll have to put it back down. At least the boys are still asleep. Our basket crane needs to be a bit stronger. And we better figure out how before those boys wake up. I like reading out here in the fresh air. These steps aren't very comfy though. But Mum won't let us bring her good cushions outside in case they get dirty. There must be some way of getting comfortable, though. Let's try making a garbage bag into a big cushion. I'll fill it with air and tie it up with an elastic band. Woohoo! This is going to be a big cushion. OK, that's full of air. On goes the elastic band. And we have our very own cushion. Hey, Zach! 
I made something to make you a little bit more comfortable. Try it out. Whoa, it's not strong enough. Sorry, but that was pretty funny. Sit tight, Zach. I have another idea for a comfy cushion. We are going to make a super-sized air bed. Here's a giant plastic bag. And we're going to fill it with lots of small plastic bags. Each one needs to be full of air. I'm going to put a bit of confetti in as well to make them look funky. Now to fill them with air. We need lots and lots of bags. Phew! I feel a bit dizzy from blowing. Let's fill the big bag, then I can have a rest. Sure you don't want to try it this time, Zach? Okay. Watch this then. <sighs> now this is comfortable. I'm floating on air. When Zach sat down on the garbage bag, his weight pushed down on the air inside. That put pressure on the seams of the bag, which are not strong enough to hold so much pressure. When Ashley's weight is shared between lots of little bags, each one only has to support a part of her weight. I'm so comfortable, I don't think I can get up. Now Zach wants an air bed too. Okay, okay, I'll go get more bags. But don't steal my air bed. How comfy. It must feel like you're flying along on a cushion of air. Speaking of flying through the air, Grace is about to get Jade's favourite toys airborne. I'm not allowed to go next door and play with Jade until she's finished all her homework. But I can't wait forever. I want to return her toys to her. And I know just how to do that without going next door. My trusty toy launcher will send them flying over the fence. I taped a can of beans on top of a shoebox. Now this length of timber is held in place by elastic bands. There. It's like a toy-sized seesaw. First off is Daisy the cow. Good luck, Daisy. Whoops, that's no good. It just goes straight up. Hmm. OK, at the moment the plank is even on both sides of the tin. What if I pull it down like this, so there's more length on the side that Daisy takes off from? The angle looks right. OK, Daisy, this time it's going to work. Here goes. Yes! Over she flies. Excellent! Jade's going to be so happy. Time for Fluffy Bunny to fly. Look at him go! It's perfect. Grace is using the power of leverage to launch Jade's toys into the sky. On one end of the beam, there is a resistance force or load, Mrs Moo Cow. At the other end, Grace inputs an energy force with her foot stomp. When the cow is midway between Grace's foot and the cow, both ends of the beam travel the same path and the energy comes out in the opposite direction to how it went in. When the can is closer to Grace's foot, the other end travels further and faster than before, throwing the toy off in a different direction. Cool! Look at them fly! Hey Jay, did you get them all? Fantastic! Mission accomplished! <laughs> The Tug of War Championships are on and my friends think they have it in the bag. They're playing two against one. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, done! Laugh it up, guys. You do have the advantage, remember? OK, round one to them. But I have a secret weapon for the next round. Not sure? This trusty tree. I'll just get rid of this and start wrapping the rope around the trunk. My opponents think I've gone loopy. I've told them it's so I'm not bowled over by their mighty force. One, two, three, pull! Ha <laughs> ha! They're struggling to even budge the rope. They thought I'd be down in mere seconds. Look guys, one hand. Now this one, and this one. Hello weaklings! <laughs> the 
they're changing places. Maybe that'll help. Check it out, no hand. <laughs> Sorry guys, but you can't beat me this time, no matter how hard you pull. Yes, they gave up. When two textured surfaces are rubbed together under pressure, friction is created. The harder Beck and Daniel pull on the rope, the tighter it becomes around the tree. And so the more friction Ashley has helping her resist their pull. OK, back to the real game. On your marks, get set, pull. Whoops! <laughs> Look at them go. That was one game worth letting them win. <laughs> I think Ashley's tug of war tactics may start to cause a bit of friction between her and the other kids. Yeah, there are lots of crafty tricks being played today. Let's see how Lara goes lifting the boys' picnic. Emily and I have come up with a better way to use our basket crane. We've lent the pole against the balcony railing. This will help Emily take the weight of the heavy basket as I pull it up. Good, the boys are still asleep. Let's have another try. Nearly got it. OK, now to carefully lift the basket. Yes, it's working. Emily can take the weight, no problem. Brilliant. Time to plunder the pirates' picnic. Oh, yum. It's all ours. Supporting the pole on the railing made it into a cantilever arm. Cantilevers work by transferring the heavy downward pull at the unsupported end of a beam into an upward force at the anchored end. It's much easier for Emily to deal with the weight of the basket using her body weight than by having to support a downward pull with her arms. Ah, the boys are finally waking up from their sleep. Yeah. Bad luck, boys. Thanks for the yummy snack. Mmm. Now you can bring us the main course. That was a happy ending for the girls, though not so happy for those poor old pirates. Well, this is a happy ending for us, Dana, because we've come to the end of the show. See, See you next time. time.